32 of modalities movement therapy. Today we're going to look at indicators. So with the use of one of these um, soft reflex balls and a circle resistance band, and you can have use a sweat towel or a little towel. We're going to pick up the um, pick up the towel with the feet. If you don't have a towel handy, then you can use the resistance band uh, instead of that. Um, when I talk about indicators, I'm talking about um, areas in the body that indicate that there's an issue. So often when we're in a rounded posture, our rhomboids are in an so in an overextended position. So this is a good indicator when we in this rounded position that these muscles are lazy, they're not working well. So we want to really focus on activating, releasing these muscles and activating them so they bring us into a lifted posture. Every now and again you can move in and out of these positions but you need to be able to move out freely and not have something that's restricting that range of movement like tight pectoral muscles. So that's another indicator that those muscles in the back, if these are tight, those muscles are overextended. So we need to release these muscles and activate those muscles more in the back. Another indicator is your hip flexor. If you sit for long periods of time, shortening these muscles here, it's going to start to affect the lower back. So we need to lengthen, release these hip flexor muscles in the front of the leg so that we can take strain off that lower back. So that muscle, that hip flexor is connected to a deep psoas muscle and that muscle is responsible for that pull and that push. So we want to really focus on balancing them out so that deep muscle, the psoas muscle, is not being affected. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to start in standing. If you see me wincing, it's because I have a cracked rib. We'll just continue, but just know that um, some of the movements um, you might be doing on your own. I'll show you what to do and you continue to do them. We're going to take the feet slightly wider than hip distance and we're going to work into the toes. So you're pushing the big toes down and then you're going to push the little toes down. Alternate feet. Working the big toes down, lifting the little toes. If your toes are not cooperating, Get down there, pick them up, and then come back to standing. Squeeze your glutes to help you stay in that open position. So be careful that this is not happening. The glutes will help open you up, activate them, and make the movement easier with the feet. Push the big toes down, then the little toes. Lift those big toes up and change and again change do another two and change good from there you can either take your resistance band or if you have a towel available just bring it onto the mat and with one foot I want you to pick the towel up so try and pinch it between the ball of the foot and the toes. As I said, if you don't have a, mat, a, a towel handy, you can just pick up that resistance band. Try and use all the toes, not just that big toe. Pinch it and lift it. Let's do another two. Pinch it and lift it. We want to just get movement into those toes, help strengthen the feet. Let's do the same with the other foot, pick it up, and again, crunch between the ball of the foot and the toes. And let's keep going, do a few more, two more, and then you can pick it up and put it to the side. Good. From there, we're going to stand at the back of the mat. 
and I want you to take your right foot in front, right in front of the left foot. You'll feel your left foot is the one that has to kick in to um, help stabilize you. Again, squeeze your glutes. So be careful that this is not happening, that you're not turning the foot out or in, or the back foot is not turning in or out. You're keeping the feet one behind the other. And it should challenge your balance. Engage your glute muscles, your buttocks, squeeze. So that helps you stay nice and upright. And that will help keep the feet nice and stable. Remember the connection. The feet are our foundation. Everything that happens in the feet affects the rest of the body, apart from the arm lines. Let's change. We're going to bring the right foot behind. And now you should have one side that's a little bit more stable than the other. Obviously you have a more dominant side. And that side should be easier to balance on. If you are battling wide in the stance slightly, but try and stay on your mat. Another little cheat or um, to simplify it a little bit is to stand on a harder surface so that it's not as challenging to the balance. But if you can challenge your balance, do so. And keep holding it, keep squeezing and release. Now take one foot out to the side and I want you to rest on the inside of your big toe. So I don't want you on the ball of the foot or the ball of the big toe. You want to tap that big toe out to the side. So you're not putting weight into that leg but you should feel the movement working into the arch of that foot. So we're now going to rise up and down off the supporting heel and let's use the arms, breathe in and out. Nice deep breath in and out. And again, you can challenge your balance a little bit by keeping it in that lifted position and engaging your core muscles, so glutes, big part of the core and release. Let's do another three and release. Two more and release for the last one and release. Okay, let's do the same thing to the other side. So again, not the ball of the foot, but just the inside of the big toe. Let's use the arms and release. Breathe them in and release. Let's go for three and release and four and release four more and release and five and release and seven and release last one and release good from there i'm taking my right foot forward so we're going to go into a runner's stance and you're going to keep the body nice and upright. Don't drop your chest down towards your thigh. You want to not open the stance very wide. It's just a question of transferring the weight from the front, from the right heel, to the ball of the right foot. So you're going to squat down into that position. And then you're just going to balance and transfer the weight forward into the ball of the right foot. Let's do it again. So keep the stance nice and narrow. Use the arms as well, just to give you a little bit of momentum to move forward and back. So you transferring the weight into the heel, keep the body nice and tall, and lift up. And you should feel the glutes working. We're going to do this one again at the end of the, of the routine. And hopefully you will feel that you're able to activate those glutes more easily than now because we will have prepared them better. 
Let's finish off with one more and release. Good. I want you to keep your right foot on the mat and take your left foot in front again. Same um, uh, balancing exercise we just did. You're going to bring the right foot right behind the left foot. Keep the toes pointing forward and challenge that foot to stabilize you. You should feel that your foot is quite tired. Just challenge it a little bit more for five and four and three and two and one. Good. Now your right foot is going back into that runner stance and you're going to squat down into that movement. Watch your knee as well. We don't want the knee going too far out, but we definitely don't want the knee coming in. Because if that arch of the foot is dropping, then the knee wants to rotate inwards. Make sure the knee is, is, turning, is just above the toes as you squat back and lift. Good, squat back. Again, you can use the arms. We're transferring the weight from the left heel to the ball of the left foot. Let's lunge and lift and five and lift. Let's breathe in and out and in and out. Keep going. Let's do two more and out and the last one and out. Good. Take that right foot in front of the left foot and stabilize yourself there. Now the left foot will be doing all the work. Use the arms if you need to, but if you can just relax and focus on your breathing. Nice deep breath in and out through the nose. Keep going, breathing in and out and let's release good shake it out we're now going to use the reflex ball so keep that handy stand at the back of your mat taking a nice deep breath in circle your arms up tuck your chin to your chest and roll down through the spine and bounce now i want you to start stay where you are Come down onto your hands and knees and I want you to start on the right side of your body and then we're going to work up and around to the left side. So before you come forward onto the mat, let's take the ball behind the right knee. You can use a tennis ball if you don't have a soft reflex ball, but something a little bit softer than a tennis ball is ideal. Let's bounce the bum back to the heels. So you're going to stay on the front of the foot. If you can, if you've got too much pain there eh, in the ankle, you curl the toes under. But try and stay in this position. You can hold onto your elbows and just bounce your bum back to your heels. And wiggle the hips from side to side. Bounce and wiggle. Now we are going to continue on the right side curling the toes under, so getting a bit of a stretch into the arch of that foot. And bounce your bum back again to the heel. And wiggle the hips from side to side. So squishing, we're releasing the back line of the body, the calf, the hamstrings. We're going to work a little bit into the hamstrings with the band just now. So wiggle those hips from side to side. Okay. Let's take the ball now and we're going to bring it onto the front of that right knee. So just above the right knee. So when you bend the knee, you can feel a little bit of, or actually when you extend the knee, you'll feel a little bit of movement in the patella, that kneecap. That's what we want to do. We want to bend and extend. Let's breathe out and in and out and in keep going and in 
Do another four. And in. And three. And in. Last one, you're going to hold it in the bent position and massage that ball from side to side. Now reach down, take the ball, we're going to bring it under the hip flexor, so we spoke about that indicator. My hip bone is here. The ball should be just below the hip bone where the leg bends. So you're going to lie forward and you're going to bring that ball right onto that hip flexor below the hip bone. Curl your toes under, you're in a plank position and you're going to massage the ball up and down. Wiggle the hips from side to side, move the ball from side to side. And then you can drop down onto your front, position the ball, you might want to adjust it slightly, and we're going to bounce that knee up to the ceiling. Five, four, three, two, and one. And like we did just above the knee, just wiggle a little bit from side to side. Hopefully you'll get a little bit of movement into the ball. And then you can drop the knee and draw a nice big circle with the foot. Now make sure you're on the right side because we're going to move up onto the colon. And we know that ascending colon starts on the right side, coming up and across and down on the left side. Change direction of that circle. And we are moving around the colon to not only help with the digestion, but we are going to work and release the colon. Uh, I mean the diaphragm. Let's bring the ball onto the inside of that right hip bone. So again, on the right side, inside my hip bone. And let's just lie here. We're going to focus on the breathing to release the diaphragm. You can turn the feet out, we you know that's part of the deep core line diaphragm. So the, big, the deep core line runs from the big toe, the arch of the foot, up the inside of the legs. And I want you to focus on your exhalation. Breathe in for four counts and try and breathe out for longer. So you want to extend the exhalation for four to six counts. And that's how we're going to release that diaphragm. Breathing in. And exhale through the nose. And just do three more. Nice deep breath in for four counts. And exhale for four to six counts. Finish off with one more. Nice deep breath in. And exhale. Now you're going to bring the ball onto the inside, the right side of the diaphragm, just inside the rib cage, not on the rib cage, but inside the rib cage, tucked inside the rib cage. And the same thing applies, breathing in for four, breathing out for six. Turn your feet out if you can and take a nice deep breath in. And breathe into the ball. We want to Feel that expansion of the rib cage. And as the lungs expand, so they push the diaphragm down and exhale. Do another two, nice deep breath in for four. And exhale. And the last one, nice deep breath in. And exhale. And now you're going to carry on around the diaphragm. And this time I want you to bring the ball onto the inside of the left side of the rib cage. So not on the rib cage, just tucked inside the rib cage. 
So you've moved over, you're doing an upside down U shape in line following the colon and you're going to lie forward on your abdominal muscles, relax your forehead on your hands and let's breathe in again. Turn your feet out and breathe into that ball, feeling the expansion in the diaphragm. And breathing in. Exhaling. Just do two more nice, slow and steady breaths. And the last one. And exhale. Let's bring the, the ball inside the left rib and uh, the left hip bone, and the same thing applies. You're breathing in for four, exhaling for four to six. Turning the feet out. Finish that last breath and let's bring the ball onto the left hip flexor. So my hip bone is here, my, the reflex ball is on the hip flexor, just below the hip bone. Come up onto your elbows, curl your toes under and massage up and down. And then you can move from side to side. So loosen up around this area. And then you're going to lie forward on your front. You're going to reposition the ball if you need to. Lift the knee up and pulse the foot to the ceiling. And then move it around. Just roll the ball from side to side a little bit. Let's drop the knee and now you're going to draw a nice big circle with the foot. And change direction. Wiggle from side to side. And let's reposition the ball under the left thigh just above the knee so you can feel that you can stay on the elbows if you want to or drop onto your forehead and bend and extend that knee breathing out as you bend and in as you extend and exhale do another two and one more and massage the ball from side to side. Now we spoke about those indicators on the on the as the pectoral muscles. So we're going to release that. Let's just finish off on the left side with the ball behind the left knee. You can hold on to your elbows and bounce the tailbone to the heels. And wiggle the hips from side to side. So reposition the ball if you need to. And then we're going to curl the toes under and continue the same movement, bouncing back towards the heels and wiggle the hips from side to side. Try to stay on the ball of the foot so you're stretching into the arch of the foot, into that plantar fascia, bounce the bum back and wiggle the hips from side to side. Good, now we're going to bring the ball onto one pectoral muscle and then we're going to bring it onto the sternum. 
and then over to the other side. So let's start on the right. Bring the ball right under the pectoral muscles and rest your forehead on your left hand. You can make a fist with the left hand and I want you to circle that arm down next to the body, breathing out as you breathe in. Rotate the arm and bring it up next to the ear. Breathe out through the nose and breathe in. Extend the arm. We're going to do six more. Exhale and breathe in. And again, exhale and breathe in. Keep going and breathe in. And let's finish off with two more. And breathe in. And your last one. Let's hold it here and pulse the hand up to the ceiling for five, four, three, two, one. Breathe in and circle the arm. Okay, we're going to position the ball now underneath the sternum. So we're going to lie forward with both hands under the forehead and let's breathe into the ball. And exhale. Keep exhaling. Try exhale for longer. See if you can exhale for more than six counts. Let's do another three. Breathing in. And exhale. Two more. Breathing in. And exhale. For the last one. And exhale. Now wiggle the shoulders from side to side. Up onto the elbows and let's take the ball over to the left side. So standing you up. I'm just going to rotate. Pectoral muscles on the ball. Relax your forehead on your right arm. Bring the arm next to the body and breathe in. Circle the arm up. Adjust the ball until you're feeling that release. And breathe out. Nice deep breath in. And exhale. And remember about those neural pathways. We have about 10 times more neural pathways in our myofascial tissue. That's why these massages and these releases are going to be quite tender. Breathe out. Keep going. Let's do four more. And exhale. And three. And exhale. Last two. And exhale for the last one. And you're going to exhale. Keep the arm next to the body. Pass the hand to the ceiling. Keep going for six and five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Come up. Let's move on to the back line of the body. And we're going to take that reflex ball onto the neck, onto that occiput ridge. Let's just have a quick drink of water. Take that reflex ball and make sure you are um, linking the fingers and putting that ball into the, onto the fingers so that we can get that movement from side to side. Lie on your back and link your fingers again behind your head, resting the weight of the head into the hands. Let's focus on the right side. So currently you should have the ball should be on your spine and at the top of your spine at the end along the occiput in line with the occiput ridge, which is in line with the earlobe. 
Now you're going to look over your right shoulder at your elbow and you're going to roll the ball along that bony process. It's often an area that carries a lot of tension. So this is a great release, quite a tender spot to be working on. But if you're using your breathing and taking it nice and slowly, easing yourself into the release, it should be quite a nice release. Do another three and exhale and two and exhale for the last one and exhale. Let's do the same thing to the other side. So you're going to roll along that bony process, breathing in and out. If the fingers are linked together, then there'll be a little bit of movement from the ball, which is exactly what you want. Keep going, focus on breathing in and out. Last one, and breathe in. We're now going to take the reflex ball in the right hand, and I want you to bring it onto the upper trapezius. So it's where the neck meets the shoulder, where we often carry a lot of tension if we're not using our main muscle of respiration, the diaphragm. You're going to take your hand onto your shoulder or just keep the elbow bent and we're going to breathe in and circle that elbow up and back. Then on the exhalation, you're going to push the lower back down into the mat and circle the elbow down next to the body. Take a deep breath in, lift that elbow up and exhale and circle it down. Here we go for three. And exhale. For four. And exhale. If you're not feeling much, adjust the ball slightly, but it should be between the shoulder blade and the rib cage. Breathe in again. And exhale. We're going to do two more. Breathing in. And exhale. The last one. And exhale. Take the ball in your right hand again. Support the head in the right hand now. Take the ball in the left hand. Bring the ball underneath that left shoulder blade. Between the shoulder blades. So it's actually not on the shoulder blade but more towards the spine. So it'll be on this spot over here, not too high and not too low. You want it right where that shoulder and the neck meet. So the head is nice and supported in the hand. You want to cradle it and let's breathe in. We're going back into that arch. Circle the elbow up and exhale as you bring the elbow down to the waist. You can straighten the arm, but if you bend the elbow, you get a bigger range of movement in the shoulder. Exhale and bring the elbow down. Nice breath in as you open everything up and exhale as you circle down. So we were speaking about indicators before. These muscles up here are indicators of a lot of tension around the neck and the shoulders and we want to release the tension there so we can focus on that diaphragmatic breathing. Now we're going to bring the ball onto the rhomboids and those are our indicators of the balance between the pectoral muscles and activating and opening up across the front of the shoulders, the front of the chest. Exhale and circle. So we're going to release those rhomboids and then we're going to activate those rhomboids. Now you're going to keep the, take the ball again in the left hand and I'm going to bring the ball onto my rhomboid on the left side. So between the scapula again, between the shoulder blade and the spine. And now we're going to circle the arm 
in all different directions. Breathing in and out. Move that arm around. You can even keep the elbow bent and wiggle the ball from side to side as you move the waist. Four, three, two, and one. If you can reach the ball, take it in the left hand and let's move it onto the right side. So stay where you are and let's position the ball onto that right rhomboid. Place it on the mat if you want to and drop down, position it onto the rhomboid so it's slightly lower down than that upper trapezius muscle there between the spine and the shoulder blade again. So take the ball, you can put it onto the mat if you want to and position yourself. Support your head in your left hand and now circle the arm that the ball is under. Take it up and around and across the body. Exhaling and inhaling. Open up. Move around, wiggle the ball from side to side. Let's reach to that ball again and take the ball onto the spine. So you need a soft ball for this. You're going to bring it onto the spine in line with the hip bones. Bring both hands under the head and we're going to breathe in and arch the back. On your exhalation, you're going to push into the ball and tuck and tilt the pelvis and wiggle the hips a little bit from side to side. So that movement, the ball is rolling from one side of the spine to the other side of the spine and we are in line with the hip bones. So again, like the occiput ridge, it's another bony process and that's called your sacroiliac spine. Let's come back to the center. So focus on if your t-shirt's getting in the way like mine, just tuck it in and breathe in. Open yourself up and exhale, tuck and tilt and wiggle again from side to side. Let's just do another two. Nice deep breath in. And exhale. And wiggle. For the last one. And exhale. And wiggle. Good. Let's release the glutes because we're going to activate them just now. Ball under the right buttock. Open up the knee. And let's move the ball around. So open the knee up and get a lot of movement. If you find a sweet spot, a little bit of a trigger point, bounce the knee up and down to give it a good release. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Move the ball around, maybe a little bit higher up if you have any tension around that area. And when you're ready, take the ball over to the other side. And wiggle. Move that ball around, open up the left knee. Four, bounce the knee if you need to, three, Two and one. Good. From there, we're going to reach down to the foot. Bring the ball under the foot. Head back into the hands. We're going to breathe in an arch for three, two, one. Now exhale, push into the mat with the lower back and tilt the pelvis under. This is your exhalation. And now you're going to keep exhaling and just roll the ball back and forward. Just releasing the foot a little bit. Drop down, let's arch and breathe in. Open up, 
Now as you exhale, push into the reflex ball and tuck the pelvis under and again wiggle the ball up and down, releasing. Focus a lot on the arch of the foot. Anywhere you find a trigger point again, let's do two more. Arching and exhaling, push the lower back down, tuck, push into the ball and wiggle. Finish off with one more, breathing in and exhale and wiggle. Let's do the same thing to the left side or the other side and ball is on the, under the foot, let's breathe in, open up an arch, exhale, push into the ball, tuck and tilt your pelvis and roll back and forth, up and down. Good, let's do it again. Nice deep breath in. And exhale. And up and down. You got two to go. Nice deep breath in. And exhale. And roll. For one more, nice deep breath in. And exhale and wiggle that foot good put the ball to the side we're now going to take that resistance band and bring it onto the feet activating those abdominal muscles that we have released with the ball when we're lying forward okay so i'm going to show you what to do and i want you to do eight of these you're going to take a nice deep breath in on your exhalation, come into a chest lift. If you're taking strain in the neck or like me in the rib cage, you're going to stay in a supine position on the mat. And you're going to bend one knee and you're going to keep the other leg straight. And you're going to pulse for eight, seven, six, five. You keep exhaling for three, two, and one. If you can't exhale for eight counts, cut it down to six. Lift your legs up. If you have your, your chest lifted, make sure it's not just your neck. I want your whole chest off the mat. Now you lower down and you breathe in. On your next exhalation, bend the other knee and pulse for eight. Come into the chest lift if you can. Six, five, you're exhaling. Four, three, two, and one. Lift up, drop the upper body. If it's lifted, breathe in. And exhale, bounce, two, three, four. Keep exhaling, five, six, seven, and eight. Lift up, lower the upper body down, breathe in. And exhale and pulse, two, three, four. Keep exhaling, five, six, seven, eight. Lift up, breathe in. We're gonna do another four. On your exhalation, pulse. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Lift up, lower the upper body, breathing in, and exhale. Keep exhaling, five, six, seven, eight. You got two to go, breathing in, lower down. Now exhale and pulse. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, last one, lift up, lower the upper body, and exhale, pulse, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, lovely, release your band, come around onto your hands and knees, and let's take a drink of water. Keep your resistance band handy because we're going to use it in some of the exercises. If you did have a sweat towel at the beginning of the class, you can use it now. I'll show you. We're going to rest the forehead on the sweat towel. It's optional. You don't need to use the sweat towel. You can lie forward. And those indicators we were speaking about, those rhomboid muscles on either side of the spine. 
Let's activate those muscles. Bring your arms next to your body. Take a nice deep breath in. And now we're going to lift the arms up as you inhale, bend the elbows and squeeze the shoulder blades together. That's your activation for your rhomboids. Now exhale, extend the arms and bring the arms around next to the body. You can bend the elbows slightly and bring the fingertips together. Let's breathe in, circle the arms up and exhale. Now we bring the pectoral muscles into an extended position and we're activating those muscles on either side of the spine. So this activates the back arm line, so you're thinking of the triceps as well. Breathing in, lift the arms up and exhale. Circle the arms down. We're going to do three more. Breathing in and exhale. Another two, and exhale. For the last one, and exhale. Okay, take your resistance band, bring your thumbs into the band, and now we're going to lift up, pulsing for two, this is your inhalation and four, exhale, lower it down. And again, nice deep breath in, pulse for two, three, and four, exhale, and lower it down. If you're lifting up and engaging those rhomboids, you should get a nice amount of movement into the neck and the neck shouldn't take any strain. Exhale, lower it down. We're going to do another four. Nice deep breath in. Rotate. Two, three, four. Exhale. Three to go. Breathing in. And exhale. Another two. Nice deep breath in. And exhale. For the last one. And exhale. Rele release the resistance band. Elbows underneath the shoulders. And if you can, looking up over your shoulder and over the other shoulder, do so. If you can, go into that extended cobra. You're coming up. Make sure you're squeezing the glutes to support that lower back. My shoulders are not up here. Pull them together at the back. Again, activating those rhomboid muscles. Drop down, either on the hands, you push up, or you can come onto the elbows and the knees. And push up onto the elbows and knees. And we're going to now take that resistance band and bring it around the wrists. So again, we can activate those muscles around the spine and the pectoral muscles in the front. Let's and the, the back arm lines as well. Hopefully you should feel the triceps working with this next exercise. Taking your weight into one hand, you're going to slightly lift the other hand, but don't compromise the position of this arm. You really want to pull up and lift here out of the shoulder and then keep the, the arm that's working extended. So you're making a nice, Big movement doesn't have to be all the way around. It can just, so when I say big, I mean keep the resistance in the band and then try and open it up as much as you can and keep focusing on your breathing. So you're circling the hand around and a nice amount of resistance will help you activate those muscles Rather than working and taking tension in the shoulders, you want the triceps to work. And hopefully you'll feel the abdominal muscles on the supporting arm side. Let's breathe in through the nose and exhale. Keep going, let's just do another two. And exhale. 
and one more and exhale okay take that hand down give it a rest but lift up and out of that shoulder and circle that supporting arm and nice big movement breathe in and out and again Keep going, we've got four to go. And exhale. And three. And exhale. Another two. And exhale. For the last one. Check that elbow, make sure it's straight. Good. You keep both hands on the mat, now try again, open up that resistance band and we're going to pull the shoulder blades together at the back, breathing in and now exhale and again, neutral, breathe in, Rump, my elbows are staying straight, my rhomboids are kissing each other on either side of the spine and exhale, think of the entire back line of the arms, breathe in, Pull them together and exhale. And if you're activating, breathe in. If you're activating that back arm line, you can work those triceps and say bye bye, bingo wings. Exhale, tuck and round. Let's do another two, breathing in and exhale. For the last one and exhale keep the resistance band handy but just put it to one side still focusing on the back arm line and those rhomboids open up the hands on either side of your mat elbows are nice and wide your neck should have freedom of movement because you're activating those rhomboids we're going to breathe in squeeze the rhomboids together push your chest down to the mat now exhale and round your spine back to neutral round boys together bend the elbows breathe in and exhale keep going we're going to do six more nice deep breath in round boys elbows and exhale breathing in Rhomboids, elbows, exhale. And oh, sorry, exhale now. That was your inhalation. Neutral, rhomboids, elbows, breathe in. And exhale. Four more, breathe in, rhomboids, elbows, and exhale. Three to go, rhomboids, elbows, and exhale. Two more, rhomboids, elbows, breathe in, and exhale. For the last one, rhomboids, elbows, and exhale. I want you to just bring your chest down to the mat and bounce your chest from side to side, from one hand to the other hand. And take a deep breath in. On your exhalation, round your spine, slide your fingers to your knees and uncurl through the spine. Circle the shoulders up and back. We're now going to bring the resistance band just above your knees. So we release the glutes with the reflex ball Let's activate those glutes now. So I'm going to start on my right knee. I'm hardly putting any weight into my fingertips because I want the weight to be into the leg so the glutes can work. I'm resting the left foot in the arch of the right foot and keeping that knee as wide, again, keeping the resistance in the band. So round the spine and pulse that knee up. Let's go for eight and seven six and five four and three two and one you're going to hold it in that open position breathe in an arch 
Exhale. Tuck. Breathe in and arch. Exhale. Let's go for three. You should feel the supporting leg is the one that's working. Breathe in and arch. Exhale and tap. You've got four to go. Breathing in and exhaling. And three more. And exhale. Two to go. And exhale. For the last one. And exhale. Let's move over to the left side. So I'm on my left knee now with my right foot resting in the arch of the left foot. Pulse that right knee up for eight. Stay in the rounded position. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Keep the right knee open. Breathe in and exhale. Breathe in and exhale. Breathing in and exhale. You've got four to go. Breathing in and exhale. And three. And exhale. Two more. And exhale. For the last one, and have a quick drink of water. We're now going to come into some standing and balances. So keep your band where it is. And I want you to curl your toes under. Push into your heels. Use your hands if you need to. But try to push into that squat position and come up to standing. Now I want you to be aware of your stance. If you have flat arches, make sure you're lifting them up. Don't let your knees come in. Make sure your knees go out and don't let this happen. Don't come forward with the knees. You should keep the knees where they are and like you're sitting into a chair, don't let the knees come in. Push the knees out, lift the arches of the feet and come up to standing. A little tip is to squeeze the glutes and don't tilt the pelvis under, but tuck the glutes into the tailbone. So you're really activating the glutes and that will help you keep most of your weight in the lateral part of your foot so that you can open up the knees nice and wide and use the resistance from the band. So we want to create more resistance. We're going to take it down for eight, breathing in and then exhale and again. So you're exhaling on the way up and you're inhaling on the way down. Keep going for five, four and exhale. Four more and exhale. So make sure the knees do not come forward. Two, three more and bring out. Two more and release. You're going to hold this one down and you're going to pulse those knees out for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Now I said we're going to come back to that running stance. Take the right foot forward. This time you're going to use that resistance band to help you keep the legs closer together and it's going to challenge that balance a little bit more. Do it without the band if you need to and if you have to come off the mat, do so. Otherwise, using the arms, we're going to go back, transferring the weight into that right heel, that front leg, and then transferring the weight into the ball of that right foot. So there it's going to challenge your stabilizers in your foot. Let's go. We're going to do another eight. Breathe in and exhale. Resist back. Breathe in. Transfer your weight back and exhale. Here we go for four. And exhale. For five. And exhale. 
and six. And exhale. And you should feel the glutes working. And the last one. And exhale. Good. Stay here. Challenge your balance in that right foot. Now think about strengthening that foot. Those toes. Focus on your breathing. And we're going to take the left foot down or the other foot. Come back into that runner stance. And take the arm forward, the opposite arm to that front leg. Transferring your weight into that left heel. And then transfer it forward. Exhale there. Breathe in. And exhale. For three. And exhale. And four. And exhale. Four, five. And exhale. Remember to sit right back. Keep the body nice and tall. Two more. And exhale. And you're ready to hold it. And exhale. And just feel that foot, that left foot supporting you. I want you to challenge yourself and spread your toes out. Really open up those toes and release. Let's bring the band around the ankles. So in this position, again, I'm just going to stand side onto you. Take the right foot. So let's use the left foot. Or we can, let's give the left foot a break. Use the right foot. So we'll go back to the first side. Spread the toes out. Use your arms if you need to. Otherwise, bring them onto your hips. And you're going to circle the band forward and back. So I'm keeping both my knees straight and I'm circling that left leg around the right leg. If you need to come off the mat, if you're not happy on the mat, do so. Use a wall, use a chair if you need to. Otherwise, really focus on challenging those stabilizers. And again, you should feel the glutes working, pulling you up into that lifted position and focus on a nice upright posture. Do another two. And you're breathing, I hope. And back for the last one. And take it back. So let's do the same thing to the other side. So stabilizing yourself, spread your toes out, really focus on keeping the ankle nice and steady and you're circling the leg you were just standing on. A nice big movement, keep the resistance in the band throughout. Keep both knees locked and you're pulling up and lifting from the core. If the knees are bent, you won't feel, it's going to challenge your balance because your stabilizers are not engaging. You want those stabilizers to really work supporting your hips, your core, helping you with your balance. Let's keep going, four more. Breathing in and out. And three to go. And out. Last two. And out. One more. And breathe out. Good. Band on the big toes. Open your feet up nice and wide. So our last exercise is to work the arches of the feet. And you're just going to lift one heel and lift the other heel. So we're going to breathe in and out through the nose. And again, keep the resistance in the band and feel the glutes working here. We're going to keep going two sets of eight, seven, five, three, and one more. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Good. Well done. Slowly release the band. Take a deep breath in. Circle the arms up, tuck the chin to the chest, and bounce yourself down. Bounce from one side 
to the other side. Come back to the center, take a deep breath in, uncurl through the spine and circle the shoulders up and back. And hopefully those indicators are now working and nice and open and feel good, well and well released. Thank you very much for joining me. See you in week 33.